And now, it's Boomer Life, lifestyle discussion designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Welcome to Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. I'm George Gordon. Are you where you want to be financially? A well-thought-out plan for your financial future is an integral part of the building of the life that you want for yourself and your family. On Boomer Life Today, we're talking about your financial future with Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group Financial Services, Inc. The irony for many disciplined savers who spent a lifetime building up their nest eggs is that they're secretly dogged by fears of running out of money. But the good news is, and we'll talk about it today, how you can worry less and, in fact, look forward to the future through great planning. That's what Jim Doyle is here to help us with. Welcome, Jim. What a great subject. We probably spend too much time anticipating where markets are going. And I sense that you're comfortable being honest when you say you can't foretell the future. You don't know where the markets are going next week, next month, next year. And it seems fair to say that most clients see risk as being bad because they only consider the downside of risk the chance of an investment losing money. When I started in this industry, two things I decided early on. Uh, one was who I was going to work with, and two was how I was going to add value to those clients or families that I was going to work with. What was key okay, is that it wasn't going to be based primarily on the one thing that I had no control over, and that's what the markets were doing and where they were going. Well, there's an incredible number of factors that influence how investment performs. Do you feel there's a tendency within the investment industry uh, for investment advisors to offer products that are wrapped in what you might call pseudoscience? There's a lot of information out there, but investing is not a science. You know, after 27 years of doing this, you know, I've been very privileged uh, to see how money is important to people's lives and the choices that they make around it. Uh, you know, if a new client uh, has a chat with me, one of the things that I love to ask them is, you know, if there's one thing about your money that you feel would be important for me to know, what would that be? Well, I'd be a good icebreaker. You know, there's lots of tools and resources and the Internet and things that we can count on to help make better investment decisions. But in this environment, the challenge that we've got is helping you cut through the clutter, to, to cut through the noise, to make investment decisions that meet your needs today. And here's the important part, those critical choices you need to make for the future. You don't know what you don't know and what you don't know can really hurt you. George, let me give you an example of what can uh, uh, hurt you. You might call it market noise. Others call it technical analysis. For instance, it's easy enough to look at things like the Japanese yen to U.S. dollar carrying trade or certain 50-day or 200-day moving average trends or what's going on in the semiconductor group. I'm not sure what the relevance of these factors are going to have if I'm looking at creating an income stream 20 or 30 years down the road. What sort of relevance are they really going to have? So we're all trying to do what we can to limit losses when markets experience those periods of, periods of volatility in the short term. But I have to wonder if this market noise causes us to lose sight of the finish line. I absolutely love the idea of start the race with the finish line in mind. Now, for a lot of us, that finish line can be really hard to see from where we might be currently standing. Getting us across the finish line, that's where you come in, isn't it? I'm, like most people, I hate losing in my portfolio, and it does make an influence on the investments that I probably consider. George, you raise an incredibly important point. We see a lot of people as they approach retirement attempt to eliminate risk from their portfolio. People tell us they want to maintain their standard of living in retirement all the way through to that finish line. Our challenge is to help them do that not only today, but also in the future. To successfully accomplish this, we've got to uh, have some risk in the portfolio. Well, it doesn't matter how much I learn or how much I'm told or how much I really remember. Every time the market goes down, my stomach goes with it. I think it's important to remember that pullbacks and correction are normal and healthy. 
Now, would it surprise you to hear that the S&P 500, you know, we've seen a pullback of at least 7% at some point every year since 2009, okay? And in most of those years, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2015, and 16, we've seen official corrections at some point during the year. So by official correction, you mean a correction of 10% or more. I thought a lot of these years finished with some pretty nice gains. They absolutely did. All of these years from 2009 had a positive return, with all of them except for two delivering double-digit returns. Yeah, that's uh, something that you need to review, I think, uh, very often, not just, not just once a year. I think it's, it's probably reasonable for markets to experience you know, uh, another pullback at some point. Instead of worrying about the event, investors probably might consider taking advantage, how to take advantage of it. Okay, where is your investment focus? Is it on the downside during periods of market loss or the fact that the stock market has been able to rally more than 240% from its 2009 lows? Don't let market noise distract you from your long-term financial plan. Okay, so, so what I'm hearing is you should stop worrying about whether pullbacks will happen because they will. Instead, you should focus on your plan and how to take advantage of the next drop so that you know what to do once it happens. And you know what? We're, we're talking along here. People need to know where they can get a hold of you if they want some advice. Uh, give me your phone number and give me your, uh, your uh, email address so we can pass it on to people. Well, sure. Phone number is 604-682-5431. And you can reach me at www.jimdoyle.ca. All right. So if you leave yourself to your own devices you're going to set yourself up for a lot of pain. I have to agree, okay? Our emotions uh, have way more influence on our long-term planning choices and decisions, I think, than most of us probably recognize. To get beyond this, this is why you need to work with a financial planner uh, uh, like myself. You know, uh, a good number of years ago, uh, uh, I was getting certified as a, a patty, uh, a diver, okay? And as... You know, they, they teach you in these, these, these programs, you know, eventually you may have your mask kicked off and, you know, things that you're supposed to do. Okay? Panic. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. What was incredible when this happened to me, okay, is someone probably noticed that I was in a bit of shock. And I felt a hand reach out and grab a hold of my calf, okay, and it just held on for just a moment. And that was all that I needed was that tiny moment to reground myself and do the things that I was trained that I knew that I was supposed to do. So you started to to think and it's amazing how quickly you can think about what you should do and overcome how many what seemed like hours of panic in that one second when you were you were probably headed for the surface, eh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've all heard the plot points, longer lives, the disappearance of the traditional pension plans and markets that may not deliver what investors need for them. Unfortunately, a lot of Canadians are distressingly unprepared for the realities that may last as long as 30 years. I met with a uh, client last year who was retiring in a few months. He had a single-page summary from his current uh, group provider showing the current value of his investment and the amount he could expect annually if it made 5%. We started talking about his wish to maintain his current standard of living going forward and what it would take for his investments to help him do that. He wanted to know if he risked running out of money. Like People like certainty, though, don't they? When you're, when you're working, you've got the certainty of a regular paycheck. But once you've retired, that's not always the case. And you can go from one check to several checks and varying income requires a bit more planning. You know, retirement income can be a bit of a shock. Not only are there multiple sources of income to deal with, but they can come in at different times and frequencies. Some of these incomes can also be variable, especially when it comes to investment income. Most folks I work with like getting their income at least monthly. Now, smaller amounts might be okay to get them annually, but when it comes to meeting expenses, by far, monthly is the preferred choice. Now, beyond getting a bit of help to create that reliable stream of income, what are we missing when it comes to retirement readiness? Well, everybody gets uh, accumulating wealth. It's easy to see if you're going up or not. 
I think what my industry is a little light on is giving investors an intuitive way to see their savings through the lens of income that they can expect in retirement or an easy way how the choices they make can affect their income. Jim, I can see you're smiling here. Well, yes, I am. Okay. And this is what sets us apart. Okay. We need to become a client's financial physician. We need to empathize. We talk. We ask. We diagnose. We educate and suggest strategies to solve problems after truly listening. This is way more than just doing pie charts. How do you feel about a sizable pile of money if you're anxious that it's going to be doing those essential things that need to be part of your future? Maybe we should treat this like a visit to the family doctor. The discussion should start with, how are you? You know, they want to tell us if we let them. You know, if we can help them tell us what they want, what it is that they fear, and hear, and what they hold dear. Now, I get a sense, when good advisors do that, they don't just focus on the accumulation side of things. It's also important for an advisor to offer wise counsel on spending the wealth as it is on building the wealth. Well, imagine thinking of framing your money this way. What is income and what is capital? What is money for utilities? What is money for vacations? And so on. This helps us when we accumulate. Now, how many times have I sat down with someone who would like to go on a vacation, but the money is in an account dedicated to their kid's education? Okay, We're going to feel horrible if we dip into this account. Well, I'm getting the feeling that person isn't uh, feeling so great about their financial well-being at this point. You know, some people experience powerful feelings of regret when it comes to spending. People want to maintain the boundary between income and capital, but this doesn't serve you as well in retirement. You know, conscientious people save. Maybe you'll spend 40 years of your working life living this truth. And it's not going to be easy to, to change this once you hit retirement. There's a natural aversion to dipping into your capital on regular intervals. Sounds like it's going to take some time and some effort to learn a new skill set. None of us like to make mistakes, even though they are part of the process. The National Financial Educators uh, had a recent study that asked participants across all age groups, okay, across their entire lifetime, how much money do you think you've lost because you lacked knowledge about personal finances? Now, the typical answers came back between ten and $30,000 or more. I think this comes back to that uh, not knowing what you don't know. Now, the survey's conclusion, uh, based on the participants' responses, revealed the problem frequently boils down to one thing. People think you know they, they know more than they actually do. Well, to be fair, Jim, you can't get comprehensive financial planning on the Internet, although some people think that is the answer. You know, within the investment industry over the next several weeks, I think most of us are going to be a little bit busy talking to our clients about a new industry-wide requirement called CRM2, the client relationship model that talks about fees, and of course that's going to lead into the discussion about the value that you're getting for those fees that you're paying. So clearly fees appear to be based, or the fees appear to be at a crossroads, and for some it's a question of, are they being charged for advice or a commodity? You know, I love the questions, okay? Who are you talking to and how do they deliver value? The convergence of technology, regulatory scrutiny, and shifting demographics are driving our industry to rethink the way that advisors charge for their services. So this debate that's playing out in the media and in the industry conferences seems to have pit the fee-only advisors against the fee-based advisors and both sides standing hard in support of their positions. To be fair, there's enough space at the table for, for both sets of advisors, okay? Most investors today are looking for a quarterback to oversee their financial lies. You know, an algorithm is, is not a substitute for a human relationship. People want it all, okay? Investment selection, allocation, rebalancing, great strategy, and full financial planning. Two questions, though, to keep top of mind, okay? What are you willing to pay for, and what has value for you? Okay, we're going to come back in, in just a moment. You're listening to Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm George Gordon today talking with Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group. And when we come back, we'll uncover key financial strategies 
to help us sleep soundly at night and why and learn why it's time to get excited about budgeting. Oh, boy, there's nothing like sitting down with a spreadsheet, is there? I might be kidding a little bit. What, really, this is one of the building blocks of financial success, and we'll talk about that more coming up next on Boomer Life. Celebrating the Boomer Lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.